All right, so today we're gonna paint an eight by eight inch oil painting. It's a dusk scene in San Francisco. For the last week or so, I've been working on Patreon rewards, which are small paintings that I send off to patrons who've reached a certain level with their pledges. There's a Patreon link down below if you're interested in more details. Um, but I'm doing these small, this is a six by eight, I'm doing these small paintings, summer landscapes, summer, summer cityscapes. And so today we're gonna paint a small cityscape. So let's just get started. Okay, so I'm starting my sketch in burnt sienna as usual, and I'm just going for the big shapes here. I'm trying to get a few lines to indicate where the street is, where the, you know, where Alcatraz is and the mountain in the background. Uh, notice how I did move the peak of the mountain a little bit to the left it, because it was sort of in the center. So I was experimenting. I thought, all right, maybe I'll move it to the left. And now I'm coming in with uh, a mixture of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue just to kind of start establishing the darks um, and then putting in the sky, obviously, and the water. And I'm not really trying to get exact uh, colors or values at this point, just approximations. Um, and it looks like here I've decided to come in and put some really strong uh, warm colors to kind of get that light effect happening early. I think the light effect is the most important thing to me in most of my paintings, um, that and composition, obviously. Uh, so yeah, by putting in those warm colors in the beginning, I start getting that feeling of light already and I can work from there, um, you know, so that the decisions I make in the future will support that feeling of light as opposed to diminishing it. Uh, it's also nice to put some of those warm uh, colors on in the beginning uh, because then you can work around them and it seems like later if you put them in you, it's it's harder to get clean um, clean colors like say that pure yellow or whatever um, so anyway now I am just yeah it looks like I'm just adjusting the water the island is probably the most detailed thing in the painting oh also there too trying to add some atmosphere on that mountain as you can notice there's like mist coming off the water also, I will mention that there's some reflection off of this painting because it's wet, it's wet, so the values are going to look a little lighter than they actually look in real life. Uh, but at the end, when I give you a photo, when I show you a photograph of the finished painting, or we do a clip of the finished painting, I'll try to get better lighting on it. Um, so yeah, putting in, um, I'm going to put the, I think I'll probably put the light in on the aisle. There we go. Okay. So, and then it's key to remember little details like the reflection in the water, which I kind of messed up. I don't know. I think I put it on too bright at first. So I just wiped it out and then put a more subtle uh, mark there. Again, it's a lot of times it's just experimentation. You know, I'll put down something I'm like, oh, that doesn't look right. Then I'll wipe it out and try it again. That happens quite often, uh, especially with values. You know, I might put something too dark or too light or whatever. Anyway, now I'm starting to add some of the details into these shapes. And I'm, uh, oh yeah, I'm using a straight edge to, to clean up the buildings, but I don't want to use too much straight edge because it'll kill some of the energy of the painting and some of the spontaneity um, that I like. In fact, I think the, the marks I made on the right, I think I, yeah, I eliminate those. I go in and eliminate them because they're just feeling too organized. It's like this balance between organization and chaos that I'm looking for. All right, putting in some of the greens of the trees along the street. And um, also, too, the lights. When I put in the lights, like the yellows and stuff, I'm really loading up the brush and just kind of gently applying the paint so that the brush doesn't actually contact the panel. It's sort of floating over the panel on a layer of paint. Um, and that I found is, I think, especially with light colors, putting that that thick paint on just makes the paint more radiant than if you have some thin layer. The paint color is pure, is more pure because it's not mixing with the layer underneath; it's floating above it. And um, I don't know. I, I remember reading someone saying, uh, you know, more paint equals more color. <laughs> it's really true. So I try to put on those pops of light using as thick of paint as I can apply. Um, and yeah, now I'm just going to go in and start putting in 
the you know all the little lights and it's it, it's amazing how putting those little bits of light in and then also suggesting some windows which I'll do at the end those little details are really all you need I mean if you look carefully at this painting it's it's kind of chaotic uh, especially if you look up close but you know it's pretty clear what it is I mean especially because the mountain in the back or because um, Alcatraz in the background is pretty clear and identifiable but that foreground is an abstract painting you know but yeah those little windows that i put in that sort of thing really defines it okay so as you notice i did move the mountain over uh to the right instead of the left i just kind of experimented around and felt like i liked it better over here um, as far as the pattern of light i kind of like how there's this big light spot here and then a little smaller here and it kind of leads the eye out in this direction to the center of interest, which seems to be Alcatraz out here, which like I said, is the most detailed um, part. And then I did kind of focus on adding some detail in this center area right here. You know, so the suggesting some windows and maybe a little bit more activity going on in here. Uh, so it's like, I don't want to have too much detail over to the edges. I don't want to draw the eye over there. I want to keep the eye in this area right here then it can go off to the distance and see Alcatraz here. Uh, putting really thick paint on, especially in the center of these light areas, there is a bit of diffusion going on. You get a little bit of a Van Gogh effect here. Um, but yeah, like bright in the center and then yellow or orange off into pink and purple. Sometimes little surprises happen. Like when I was painting the background, I saw a little bit, you know, these little hints of pink in the background. And when I added those, I felt like it really added some needed illumination. You know, it's not as bright in value or uh, as light in value as some of these pops of light. But, you know, it really, I felt like it really contributed to the feeling of illumination in the distance. One of the most common questions I get is, how can I loosen up as a painter? I feel like I paint too tight and I'm just too careful and I want more spontaneity in my brushwork, more energy. And I understand where you're coming from. That's one of the first struggles I went through. I first started painting from photographs and my paintings looked like a painting of a photograph. There was something missing. So I went and I started getting out a bunch of library books about this because this was back in like 2003, 2004 when I started painting. And it, there was this common theme through all of the books, which is, you know, if you're going to paint landscapes or you're going to paint representationally, you've got to paint from life as much as possible. Um, and for me, I was interested in landscapes, so I got out and I started doing plein air landscapes. And it took a little while, but I did feel like that it, you know, really loosened up my brushwork and it kind of uh, sped up my approach to painting. I got faster, looser, and more confident too. Um, and I've noticed that especially when I come back into the studio. And I know I talk about this a lot, but it's so true. And a painting like this could not have happened without years of plein air painting. Um, so now when I'm in the studio, I paint like a plein air painter, but I find that the results I get are, they are, it's kind of a combination. There's more control you get in the studio because you're working under con a controlled environment. Um, so it's a lot easier than plein air painting. You've got control over the light on your palette and on your panel itself. Uh, so in a way, it's like a lot easier. You can spend more time with a photograph, cropping it and whatever. But then when you go to lay on the paint, you know, y you can approach it like a plein air painting. So you get the best of both worlds. And um, so I find that, yeah, painting from life, painting quickly and painting a lot is the way to loosen up. So like I said, that's a question I get a lot. And I totally understand that because I was in that place too, where I just kept on you know, adding more and more detail. I was not seeing the big shapes and I was not, I was just getting bogged down, which is easy with a photograph because you can see all those details and you have all the time in the world. You could spend like 24 hours on a painting, which I did on my first painting. I think I went, I think it was like four, six hour sessions and I was putting in every blade of grass, you know, so, um, you can tell somebody who's a plein air painter and somebody who is, um, you know, somebody who's a studio painter who just paints from photographs. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's just not what I'm into. Um, I think there are a lot of painters that love like super detailed 
uh, paintings and they like to take it to a certain extent um, or to an extreme extent with the detail. Not me. I like just a nice impression of the scene. Um, and so that's what I'm after. Anyway, I could ramble on about this forever, as you guys know. But I will cut it off here and hope you guys are all safe, healthy, and being creative. And thanks for hanging out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.